Right, so we've got the optos, so we've got that rump, the, uh, sorry, we've got the orbit opto, which is that one down there, and we've got the opto in the trough. Let's just have a quick peek. Well, we can see that it is illuminated as it uses visible red light on these. I'm just going to jiggle the connectors. And uh, jiggling the connector is triggering it. Let me just get some light. There you go, you can see better now. So this connector here is very loose. I don't think it's the solder joints. Got my filthy fingers from messing on this. Solder joints don't look overly broken. I think this, I think the pins on this are gone. They feel really loose. Right, so we are gonna recunt this. We can see the pins are really bent in, so they're barely making contact. Um, so we'll put a new housing on, I don't have any two pin housing, so I'm just going to cut this down with a knife, make it into a two pin. We've got the uh, Molex 156 tool, and we've got some 156 Trifurcon pins, so let's get to it. That's done, so new pins are crimped on, new housing, so we've just got to refit it. That's much tighter, let's power on and see what it does. Right, I don't see the trough uh, opto lilt anymore. So, uh, what we can do. That's the ball trough, and there you go, the ball trough's good now. So, uh, that one's fixed, now we've got to look at the orbits. And while I'm just climbing back here to take a look at the optos, I've noticed this plastic is not attached. And if we look through here, we have a screw hole there. That lines up with that metal post, so I just need to go and find a screw and we'll get that stuck in there. Right, I have pulled out the left orbit to make things easier. And just, oh, it's triggering. Triggered then. So just to check, so that's the emitter side, this is the receiver side. Now we can see it is focused correctly, so it is aligned. This keeps triggering. It keeps triggering, but the LED. Uh, that's that's got to be a bad connection. It's got to be. It's got to be. That's loose. What's triggering it? I mean, the emit side's working clearly. I mean, the solar looks good. Solar looks good. What about this connector here? That solar looks good. Does that mean that's a loose connection? I can't tell if that's the wires. I need to keep this still. I'm starting to think we've got a solder problem somewhere here. I'll uh, pull this board out and take a better look at it. Well, I didn't trust those connectors, so I've put new housings and pins on to both sides. Um, I'm fairly sure we've got bad solder on this board though. Additionally this LED doesn't seem to work so I'm going to pull this board out, reflow solder and replace the LED and then see if I gets it working. So I have reflowed everything um, and I've basically unsoldered the LEDs to allow me to adjust them and then resolder them and then I'm basically just powering it up so I can effectively target it. So I think I've got that dead on perfect now. Yeah, it's pretty much done perfect. So I'm gonna go and stick it back in the game and see what it does. Right, I think we've got it now. So if I perfect. Well, it took me a while to find it, but I've got my uh, Sega switches. So I am gonna pull this lower green target out. See, it's got a whole bunch of play where it does nothing. So yeah, get that one out and replace it. Right, I've assembled the switch unit. There's the original, is that the original switch? Nope, sorry, where is it? There it is. That's the original switch. The original one has a diode present inside the switch. And my replacement one doesn't, so I've basically opened up the switch. Uh, I'm just gonna put a 4148 in there. And then close it back up and solder it to the little board. And then we've put it back into the unit. Okay, switch is back in. 
and it should be a lot more sensitive now. You can't really see me pressing it. That's definitely better. Right, I'm going to play a game and see if it's all good. This uh, this game took a lot longer than expected. It ended up having quite a few faults on it. Right, I've just got ready to start a game. I dropped one ball and it's gone into the Superbook. And I've gone into active switches and I can see we've got the Superbook is reading as active, which is fine. But the uh, trough is uh, reporting as bad again. So what's going on there? I'm pretty sure there's nothing in it. Let's do the switch. Nope, there's nothing in the trough and it's reporting a fault again. I might have to pull those boards out and check those for solder joints. Okay, so I've pulled down the receiver side from the trough. If I try and shine the camera into it, it's not bright enough, I don't think. There you go. So we can see this is using the uh, light on my phone. It does actually work, so there's no intermittent connection. So, the remaining problem is surely just an alignment problem. So, I'm going to put it back in the trough and tweak it and see if I can get it to work. Well, it doesn't seem to be an alignment issue because if we look through the hole, we can see. I can't get the camera, there you go. So, if we get the camera dead on, we can see that that's perfectly aligned in the transmitter. Um, I'm going to say, obviously, we know. Can trigger it from the light on the however when we place it in place let's just get this so we can see so look we can see that we've got the red patch showing through the PCB so we know we've got perfect alignment with the sensor but it's not triggering so the fact that I can trigger it with white light but not with that red light makes me think it's not sensitive enough or it's not the right emitter uh, sorry not, not the right collector this is the receiver board from the trough. Now it doesn't have to use um, a collector as you would get with the conventional um, opto board. You normally get like an IR transmitter and receiver. Now this is just a standard LED. So it's possible this is weak. Um, so I don't have, basically you need exactly the same wavelength to make it work. These are 660 nanometer. So I found another Sega trough board which will have exactly the same LED on it. It's a slightly different board, obviously. Uh, but we basically just want to steal the LED from it and swap it over and see if uh, that works. Um, I'm going to test that this works, actually, by putting some power into it first before I go through swapping it. But let's see if that makes any difference to how effective it is. Right, I've got it lined up with the screws in. So nothing intermittent. You can jiggle it around. And... That is working, so that LED has made it more sensitive, so the old one must have been on its way out. I do need to get around to ordering a bunch of those, as I've had this happen a few times. Not so much with the trough ones, more so with the playfield optos, like those ones in the back loops. Well, it just never ends with this game, so... I'm trying to play a game, and you can see the trough is only seeing four, uh, three of the four balls, so Switch 13 is not quite working right. Let's get the playfield back out again. Right, so I've got the apron and the trough cover off, and that bit of plastic in there is not going to help things. It's potentially going to skew the balls off, and that's why they're not sitting on the switches properly. But, let's see. So that's working good. Hmm. So, switch 12 isn't good. So I'm pressing down on it, and the ball has disappeared. Now if I wiggle, it appears and disappears. So that switch is bad. But the one that we were having a problem with was 13. See, 13's good. Let's just get that plastic crap out of the trough. Oh, that's fallen out now. Um, so I don't think there's a problem with 13, but we need to replace 12. As it's no worky. 
Right, so after playtesting, I found another problem. Um, the so this is the right main flipper here, and it's sticking up. Um, it's not. I was expecting it to be too tight against the bushing, but it isn't. It's kind of unexplainable. It's not catching on the EOS. It's got plenty of play in it. I'm just going to pull the coil and stop and uh, check the condition of the coil sleeve. I've pulled apart the flipper mechanism. Uh, I have actually rebuilt these since I bought the machine. Although that, that coil stop is getting a little worn, so I'm going to file that flat. Uh, get a new coil sleeve. This one's looking a bit worn. And the plunger, as it seems to be common, a lot of these rebuilds are not very good quality. It's got sharp edges there, so I'm going to file that and then sand it and get a new sleeve and I reckon I'll fix it. So I'm just prepping to uh, do this micro switch swap now. It's a bit of a pain in the ass design, you have to take this whole front plate off because uh, the second bolt for each of the switches is not accessible with this in place so we've undone all of these screws and we do so like that. I'm trying not to drop screws on the floor and lose them. And then we can undo this second one, and we will get that desoldered. Right, so new switch has been fitted to position 13. We're going to uh, bolt trough test mode. And now I can see it's working reliably and it's not going off the further you push the switch down. All the balls are not currently sat on the switches because they've, uh, they're kind of stacked up. So uh, I'll just get them straightened out and check it out properly.